Man, I got some good ones for you today. Got a couple boxes in, all audiophile records, maybe one or two little exceptions, but primarily all audiophile pressings, and super excited to share them with you. Genres all over the place. Got some jazz, got some rock, got some reggae, a little bit of Latin. It is going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge, so hang in there. I think no matter your music taste, I got something in store for you today. And we're going to jump right in with one of the first jazz albums to sell over a million copies and that is of course the famous the one that everybody knows and loves the Dave Brubeck Quintet this is the Time Out album again sold over a million copies the first jazz album to reach that accolade and it is famous for its unusual time signatures including that iconic track Take 5 that was done in 5 4 time signature I believe it was originally recorded in 1959, and it kind of challenged the conventions of jazz music with its experimental um, approach. The album cover here is as iconic as the album itself. It's a painting by uh, S. Neil Fajita, I believe is the correct way to say the name. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but it is a very iconic painting. So iconic album, iconic painting, how can you go wrong? Well, you can't, because it has iconic songs as well. Uh, the first three are bangers. Blue Rondo a la Turk, um, you have Strange Metal Lark, Take Five. Ugh, they all are melty, melty, melty good. This particular pressing is the AP45 across two LPs. It's mastered and cut by Bertie Grunman at his studio. And it sounds absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. It has a wide sound stage. It has amazing dynamics. Um, it just, it is just, you put it on and you just get lost in the jazz. Now, is it perfection? It's short of it. I got to be honest with you. I had some distortion on track A2, uh, so I was a little bit disappointed in that. I did some research, and some people say it's a tracking issue, that this is very demanding on your equipment, and that you really need a high-end tone arm and cart for this to track well. I got a Riga P10 on an Umami Blue uh, cartridge. I don't know how much better you got to get to be able to track an album. Uh, so I do have a, a, a custom-made shim that's uh, going to be being made here. I'll have that in a couple weeks. So I'm going to try the album again, but I'm suspecting there might be something going on with the press in itself. I might even contact AP. They do have fantastic customer service, but it is the only track I had issues with, and it wasn't throughout. It was only at key points. Hands down, though, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Take five. Best version I ever heard. It just is phenomenal. It is worth the price, the entry price alone. And you can still pick this up at AP's website. So don't pay the overprice on the Discogs. Go to AcousticSounds.com. There's no referral for me telling you that. So uh, before you bash me in the comments trying to say that I'm just another guy trying to push vinyl, I get nothing. I get nothing. I'm trying to save you a buck. Go buy it from Acoustic Sounds. Don't pay flipper prices, okay? Just don't do it. It's not worth it. All right, this album, the next one, is probably, is now, probably one of the best male vocal albums I have. Um, there's a couple that I would put in that category. Uh, Amos Lee is one of them. I have a couple other ones. Uh, there's a Leonard Cohen album that I think is just phenomenal. Uh, the, but this is now part of that list, and that is the Dean Martin Dream with Dean. This is the intimate Dean Martin, and it is an album that captures his more laid back and intimate side. It was originally released in 1964, and it features Martin's smooth vocals accompanied by small jazz ensembles. It sounds gorgeous. And it really has a relaxed vibe, which really makes it more favorable, I feel, for late night listening sessions. In fact, that's how I listened to it. I did my lights, I lit a candle, and I just, I just, just enjoy, just got immersed into the amazing, amazing Dean Martin. 
Got some cool songs on here. Um, Confessing That I Love You is one really great track. Uh, you also have Fools Rush In. Everybody knows that song. Come on. Uh, and, and what some folks might not know, but Dean actually re-recorded it for this album, is Everyone Loves Someone. Okay, That's re-recorded specifically for this album, and it sounds uh, phenomenal. This is another AP Press uh, it is another 45, so it comes across two LPs. This one was mastered by Ryan Smith at Sterling Sound, pressed at QRP, and it is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Dean's vocals, man, let me just tell you, they're just front and centered, and the record is dead quiet. But his voice just like projects off the music, and there's this like reverb that happens that when you have the lights down, or if you just close your eyes and listen to the music, I'm telling you, Dean, he's there. He's right there in front of you, singing his heart out, singing his favorite songs for you in your listening space. The music is just three-dimensional. It's transformational. If you haven't heard this particular pressing, it's another one that I feel, if you like Dean Martin, if you like that style, if you want something easy to listen to at night or put something on, for dinner or a date night, put this onto your want list. Put this high on your want list because I'm telling you, it is really that good. It is, it is absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. All right, sticking with uh, some, some groovy music and another AP press, and then we're going to take a break from the APs. This is Ahmed Jamal Trio. This was actually recommended to me in the vinyl community. Um, this is, album is the At The Pershings. This was recorded live at the Pershings Lounge in Chicago in 1958. The album features in classic Ahmad Jamal's trio. The, the lineup is Jamal on piano. You have uh, Israel Crosby on bass and Vernal um, Fournier, I think is how you say it. He's on drums. And it is just awesome. It, this album, to give you an idea how great it is, it was on the Billboard magazine charts for 108 weeks. So you know it's going to be good, right? I mean, that's just, that's just super, super impressive. Super impressive. Uh, it's minimalist style uh, of Jamal, kind of influenced other great jazz uh, artists as well. Um, even Miles Davis was inspired at one point by him. So you know you're getting yourself a top shelf jazz musician. You do have some hit songs on here. Uh, Point Sienna, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. We have a conversation on this channel a lot that I suck at pronouncing words. Um, another great track here would be the first track, But Not For Me. I think that one's really worth giving it a spin. And honestly, the second one, Sari with the fringe on top. Yeah, I would go there. This is AP QRP. You know the drill, right? It is a mono release on 200 gram vinyl. Press using the pre-existing metal work from True Tone Mastering. By the way, a little tip. If you have a lot of records and you can't keep straight on what's mono, just give them a little tag and say that they're mono. Makes it so much easier than having to search the album or the logo, every, or the logo, the label, every time you want to listen to a record. Um, this is another gorgeous album. It, the sound is well balanced. It fills the room. Some say the OG is a little bit better. All right, that being truthful. I don't know. I don't have the OG, but I can tell you, I feel like this was pretty dang good. And I don't know if I need another copy, to be honest. I think to satisfy having this album in my catalog, it's a phenomenal pressing. It's a great pressing. It's a good example. I don't think I need to go get another one. Prove me wrong. Maybe. I don't know. I enjoyed this one. I'm happy with it, folks. Okay, the next one is not an audiophile record, but then we're going to get back into some. Uh, but it is a little bit of a nostalgic record, and it's a record that just kind of, I don't know, it just takes me back to a, a different period of time, and I'm hoping it will for you as well. And that is the musical youth, the youth of today. Do you remember this album? Is this something you listen to? I don't know. It was released in 1982, and it marked the debut of the British Jamaican reggae band, um... It features their massive, massive, massive hit, Pass the Duce, which became this like global phenomenon when it came out. Uh, it is, you know, the band itself, Musical Youth, the members here, they were actually the youngest band 
to achieve commercial success in the UK at the time. And the album blends the reggae uh, style with some pop elements, really making it accessible to a very wide audience. Uh, of course, the hit song here is Pass the Duce. We talked about that. But you also have a couple other really, really great songs on here. Um, some of them are, you know, you got Youth of Today. You also have Never Gonna Give You Up. Two really other additional songs. So you really got three kind of singles on this album. And this particular pressing, or this particular album itself, I actually got in a collection I bought. I just bought a collection. I really haven't even unpacked it yet. It's still in my hallway in boxes. And this one was sitting on top. And when I saw it, I'm like, I so remember this album. And I had to give it a clean and put it on the turntable to give it a spin. And I got to tell you, it's a VG plus copy throughout the cover and the record are both G VG plus, right? No major scratches or wear. It, it cleaned up really well. Um, and it sounds good. It sounds good for a 42 year old pressing. And it immediately brought me back to a younger time. Uh, it does have a little bit of surface noise that you can hear in some quiet passages or between the tracks. Um, but I mean, I feel like that's a little bit to be expected for an album of this age that has been played who knows how many times that's been stuck in some shed where I, I found it for years. Uh, so I'm not too hung up on it. When the music kicks in, all of that goes away. The moment that nostalgia kicks in, man, it's just like you just forgive about everything. I don't know if you have any albums like that yourself. I, if so, I would love to hear it in the comments. You know, albums that as soon as you put them on just takes you back to a different era of time in your life. I would love to know what that album is. Drop it in the comments below. Okay, the next album, I'm just going to go over kind of quickly. It is a MoFi pressing. It is an album that I did an unboxing of, but I know sometimes people don't watch unboxing videos, so I want to make sure I included it on what's new and good, and that is the Beatles self-titled album, which is commonly known as... The White Album. Uh, this was originally released in 1968, double LP, and it features this minimalist cover that everybody has known, which was done by the artist Richard Hamilton. Um, this album covers sort of a wide range of musical styles. You got a little bit of rock to folk to experimental, and it's considered one of the most diverse and influential albums in rock history. Uh, you do have several hit songs on here. You have uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, you have Blackbird, you have Helter Skelter, you also have the two, which I would say don't throw stones, two songs at the end that are very forgettable. I kind of stop at D4, Revolution 9, don't know what was going on for eight minutes and 15 seconds, and also Good Night, Kind of skippable. I'm not going through eight minutes and 15 seconds on an LP just to get to good night. Sorry, that's a little bit of a throwaway there. I would have loved to see about probably three more Beatles songs with the Beatles on the Beatles self-titled album, then some remix, whatever that was, Revolution 9, that I still don't think many people understand. It's weird because some people say they do understand it and it's like, oh, it's a revelation. And then I'm like, that really is just a mix of sound. I get the theory behind it. I read the theory behind it. I still don't get it. Sorry. Uh, MoFi release, uh, pressed at the Victor Company of Japan, remastered, cut by Stan Record, and I think it sounds phenomenal. I got beat up on this one uh, on the review. I said it sounded great. Uh, again, I'll go ahead and put the link to the unboxing in the description. Check it out. I do give it a thorough listening um, review, what it sounds like, what I thought about it. You get to see the unboxing. It was sealed when I got it, so I actually unsealed it in front of you. And of course, OG, you know, these diehard Beatle fans has got to say it's not OG, so they think it sounds horrible. I beg to differ. I like, and I've said this before, I like sometimes when albums do get a little bit remastered and they come out. It, it gives you variety. That That's what makes collecting variants fun. If every album sounded exactly the same, collecting variants wouldn't be fun. That doesn't mean it sounds horrible. It just might be slightly different than what you're used to. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I, I mean, to me, no, but to some others, if you're a diehard fan, I can get how that kind of sets you off. Okay, this is the um, the last, I think, non-hi-fi album, but it is a cool album, and it just came out. It just was released. It's, it's, it's brand new album, and I'm showing it because it's got a cool thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, but that's the Mark Anthony. Now, I think this this is Muevenes, Muevenes, I don't know. I don't know how to speak Spanish. 
I don't even think that's a Spanish word. I think, I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is limited edition. The reason I want to share this with you is actually it's signed by Mark Anthony. I thought it was really cool. I got this one for my wife. She's a big Mark Anthony fan. And when I saw the opportunity to pick this up, I had to get it for her. Released uh, in 2024, obviously, it's a brand new album, and it showcases his vibrant salsa style. What do you expect? It does uh, include some collaborations with other prominent Latin artists, and it features sort of an upbeat dance track and some romantic ballads. I haven't listened to it. I just wanted to share it with you because it's a new pressing, and I just thought it was really cool to have a signed copy. And, you know, sometimes you have to add albums to your collection that are not going to be ones that maybe you spend all the time, but hey, your significant other will, and you go out and you get them some cool albums as well. So when they have their friends come over, guess what album she's going to pull out? The signed Mark Anthony one, right? So how cool is that? All right, getting back on the hi-fi train, and we're going to take a plane, and that plane is going to be Mr. Joe Walsh, the smoker you drink, the player you get. And I'm holding it this way because this was a little bit of an argument on Discogs as well, is because here's the freaking spine, man. This is the album to its side. Everybody's like, no, it's supposed to be like this. I don't know. Is Blonde on Blonde supposed to be sideways or standing upright? You tell me. I don't know. When in the spine is this way, this is the way I hold the album. That's just me, folks. Uh, released in 1973, this is Walsh's second solo studio album. It showcases his electric style, blending rock, blues, and country influences all in one. So what a treat that is. And the title, in case you're wondering, because it sounds a little bit jokeful, it's supposed to be. It's a playful twist on a common phrase. You have a lot of cool... Uh, hit songs in here. You got Ra uh, Rocky Mountain Way. You have, you know, so Rocky Mountain Way, let's pause there for a moment because that kind of became Walsh's, you know, Walsh's, sorry, uh, signature song. And so I think it deserves a little bit of praise, right? Who knew that when this album came out? But you know, now that's what we think of him. Uh, it also comes with uh, two other great songs. You got Book Ends, which is a fantastic song. And I would also say Wolf is a really good spin as well. So you got some good songs right up front, right? Like those three tracks, ooh, they're the ones, man. Just play those three. If you're not familiar with the album, go stream them. Track one, two, three. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, this particular pressing is the AP45. I don't even know how to position this anymore. This is the AP45, two LPs, Atlantic 75 uh, release, master from the original tapes and cut by Kevin Gray, Coherent Audio. Uh, and I got to tell you, folks, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I freaking loved it. It's dynamic as heck. It's got a large sound stage. It's another album where, boom, you put it on, you crank up the volume, the band is in your listening space. They're taking over your room. It's just that cool of an album. Now, is it better than a 33? I don't know. I don't have the 33. That's why I got the 45. Will I go seek out the 33? Nah. No reason to. Got the 45. Sounds phenomenal. I don't mind getting up out of my chair to go flip the album. But if you notice my listening space, like it's less than five feet. I'm not crossing the universe to go flip a record, right? So for me, and being a little bit on the chunky side, getting up once in a while to go flip a record, I probably need more 45s in my life, to be honest with you. Like this one. John Coltrane plays the blues in stereo. This album recorded in 1960, but was released in 1962. It highlights Coltrane's ability to blend blues with his avant-garde jazz style. Um, you know, the album includes some of Coltrane's lesser known, but I would say highly influential tracks. You, it's... I would say, you know, it's kind of praised for its emotional depth and technical brilliance for those that are like really follow Coltrane. It does have a couple hit songs. You have Blues to Elvin, which is the first song. Uh, you have Blues to Beckett, and you also have Blues to You, right? This, again, another banger, one, two, and three, right off the top side of the, the album. They're the ones I would listen to. You know, side, side three and four are okay. I kind of like, I guess I just really like LP1 more than I liked LP2. Overall, though, great album. It's another AP, QRP, Atlantic 75. You know the deal. Master from Original Tapes, Ryan Smith. I mean, what's not the love? If you love Coltrane, if you love great sounding records, man, go get it. Go get it before it's sold out. Do yourself that favor. And I got one more A75 for you, and that is, yes, 90125, which was from 1983, and it really marked a major comeback for Yes. This album features the hit single, 
owner of a lonely heart. We all heard it. We heard it on a radio a million times. It still gets played everywhere. What a wonderful song. Uh, it reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And w despite what some people think, now if you're a Yes fan, you know this, but 90125 um, was actually the catalog number for this album. That's where they got the name from it. The title is actually from the catalog number at the record company. I, you don't know how many times I've heard 90125 as a zip code. And I'm thinking, no, you're thinking of the Beverly Hills 90210 show and you're getting a little bit confused. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just really thought it was 90125. I don't know. Uh, but this did introduce a little bit more pop-oriented sound for the band, and it was produced by Trevor Horn. Uh, in addition to that hit song we talked about, Owner of a Lonely Heart, which is right in the front. We're noticing a trend here, aren't we? Uh, but it does have another one here, and you are going to have to get out the other record. Leave It is a great song, and It Can Happen is also another really good song on this record. You already know the specs, right? We've done a couple of these in a row, so I won't waste your time there. I will tell you, it is fantastic. To me, it is a straight demo album. It's gonna go right in my top list of when people come over and they say, hey, I wanna hear your stuff. Show me this vinyl stuff, man. This is gonna be one of the albums that's gonna get pulled out for sure. It sounds that good. It's top notch, top shelf, top hi-fi all the way. If you love Yes, even if you just love that song and you want to hear the best it's ever sound, pick up that album. Grab it before it's gone. All right, folks, I'm rounding out my last one, some MoFi. We're getting out of AP. We're stepping into MoFi. So disconnect if you don't like MoFi. Stay in if you like good music. And that is Santana's self titled album, his debut album, uh, and it was released in 1969. It blends rock, blues, and Latin music, which was sort of revolutionary at the time when you think about it. And what really boasted this performance of sales of this album was his Woodstock performance, right? When he performed at Woodstock, psh, so went up the sales. So good for him. That was a good marketing thing to play at that uh, event. The album cover features this psychedelic line reflecting the era's artistic style. Uh, you do got some amazing hit songs on here. You have Evil Ways, Jingo. Uh, you also get the Soul Sacrifice. So really cool songs here um, to, to give a play here. Uh, you know, it, to me, this is just classic Santana. I, you know, there's a couple really great Santana albums, in my opinion. That's one of them. This one is the 2023 repress, uh, KW Mastered, Press It RTI. Uh, it sounds great. The dynamics are good. It has a large sound stage. It's got good instrumental separation. And I don't know, man. You know, some people are like, MoFi, whatever, they did, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's up to you. I got to tell you, it sounds good. And you might be thinking, if you see this record in the store, how do you know if you have the reissue or the original? Well, a little tip, the reissue has a little box here that calls out the DSD uh, step in here. So it says the DSD 256. That's submitted on the original issue of this MoFi pressing. Uh, so that's how you know which version you have in a store without pulling out the records and giving them an examine. Does it matter? Did the original pressing from MoFi, did it use that digital step? Does it freaking matter? I don't know. I can tell you what does matter is that I need another cup of Joe and I suggest you grab one, put on your favorite record, and I'll see you on the next episode.